Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the channel, everyone. My name is Bloody Yeagers, and today I'm going to be breaking down one of the most misinterpreted scenes in AOT. And this would be the decision between Armin and Erwin. And I see a whole lot of people misunderstand what this is supposed to be and what's going on in here, including EDs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be watching the thing in its entirety. And I'm going to be breaking down exactly what is happening, exactly what the author is intended to do. So without further ado, let's just hop right into it. So the first clip we have here. Okay, actually, this is interesting. So the first thing we have here is Mikasa's headaches. Now, a lot of people have told me that Mikasa's headaches aren't exactly connected to Ymir since she has them in this sort of situation and with Luis. What does it have to do with Aaron, Aaron right? Well, actually, the headaches are uh, twofold. It's Ymir peeking into her mind. It's also what she gets when she feels like she's with her family, which would, of course, relate back to Aaron because she feels like she's with her family whenever Aaron, Aaron is in danger. So just to, just the first thing to clear up there, because I see a lot of people mentioning this in the little we see to debunk 139. <laughs> やっと追いついたエルヴィンアルミンに使うって。俺は人類を救える方を生かす。お前ら自分で何をやっているのか分かっているのか。エルヴィンを調査兵団団長を見殺しにしろと言ってるんだぞ。<笑> 邪魔をするな。エレン、市場を捨てろ。市場を捨てろ。さっき注射をすぐに渡さなかったのは何なんですか。エルヴィンが生きている。その可能性が頭にあったからだ。フロックが瀕死の団長を運んでくるなんて全
Orman did not have that skill. I mean, and to be honest with you, I don't think he really developed it. I mean, he had, I'll give him a break, he had a little bit of time. But we saw in this very arc, you saw he was kind of shaky with the, with the, with the skills. But again, you know, he was just starting out, so, you know, be light of him. But we see him throughout the entirety of the War Parody and Rumbling arc, and he never has the leadership ability that Erwin had. So I just want to say right now, I 100% agree that Erwin was the one who brought him in this far. And it's Erwin, and it was only Erwin. However, that is not the point of the scene or what's most important here. Let's continue. <laughs> So he's he's bringing up examples of Armin's, you know, intel, uh, intellectual prowess. And when they're trapped in the supply room. <laughs> So as you see, the famous line, this line gets brought up again in 139, right? Where he says it's going to be um, Armin and his humanity. Now, he's going to give the reason why later, but that, that line is extremely important. <laughs> I'm sure you know. Kudasai, <laughs> she says. <laughs> as she's fading him down. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh, another thing I like to point out. Since I had this, I, I, I pissed some people off the pole uh, uh, a few weeks ago, and they're like, I said, who's more evil, Armin or Erwin or Flock? And, and uh, I say, Erwin care about, Flock care about his men more, right? Uh, here's the problem with Erwin. The, the reason why there's only nine members of the story core is partly on Erwin. I just want people, this has something to do with the scene. How do people understand the fact that Erwin is partly responsible for the only nine story core members being left? That was his decision intentionally because he, he was making his mind whether he's going to be a good person or not. And so he just, he was just letting people die as he was making this decision. So I just want to make sure Erwin understands that. Let's continue. <laughs> And to make it more clear, if he would have had his plan earlier, right, Levi would have killed the Beast Titan earlier, meaning more people would have survived. Meaning he his decisions directly led, or maybe in, he indirectly led two people dying. This is my car. Erwin. ケモノ<笑> この人にはまだ地獄が必要なんじゃないかって。うん。分かったんだ。巨人を滅ぼすことができるのは悪魔だ。悪魔を蘇らせる。Now another people misinterpret. And now I'm going to pick on the, the enemy haters. People who hate Armin both say, "Oh, Armin abandoned his principles in the end." Um, because he said, uh, you have to abandon your humanity or the against monsters. Flock says it, and he's, you know, I mean, he's essentially right about this. The only, they got this far off of, you know, countless sacrifices and, and many, many evil acts. In fact, in, when in the 56th expedition, the 50th expedition, whatever it was, never to capture Annie, um, this is when Armin comes to the realization that he is a, uh, cruel and ruthless man. Erwin, because and, he, and he's able to accomplish this because of that. Now, a lot of people say, oh, Armin abandoned that. No, he did not. No, he did not. First off, as I always like to bring up, he, he, the Liberio raid. That was, you know, mostly killed innocent people, right? I mean, Aaron, you know, he he transformed under an apartment building. <laughs> he transformed under an apartment building. And, you know, Armin, you know, when you have a big blast like that, like what he did at the port, next to a residential population, 
Richardson's area, as you can see, he killed mostly innocent people. So he already abandoned humanity to become to 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 greater his goal. Same with the Angus the port. He slaughtered a whole bunch of his comrades, people he worked with, you know, to accomplish an end goal. So he he, he absolutely did. They both became devils, both Flock and, and, and Armin. This is what you're talking about, oh, who's Erwin's true success? A lot of people like to say, well, Flock became a devil, so he's automatically better than Erwin. Well, well, wait a second. Armin also was a devil as well. He was a devil in season three, and, and he progressively became a worse and worse as time went on. To the point where, you know, he was just as bad as anyone else. You just say that because he didn't go as, as far as you would like him to go. He wasn't as evil as you wanted him to be. Since he wasn't, since he didn't support literal homicide, he, you say he's not a devil. You say he didn't become a devil, which he, which he 100% did. And he 100% did abandon his humanity. And that is why um, Armin chose truth, not friendship. This is a big misconception. Armin chose uh, truth. Truth, truth. Truth that genocide is wrong and not friendship with Aaron. Listen Flames of hope, because while Armin was, you know, good, you know, strategically, he didn't have that hope that either, by the way, I'm gonna go and play devil's advocate again. That Flock had Flock had better leadership skills than than, than Armin did. That's shown explicitly through the um, well, I want to say expl I want to say it's shown in Wolf Parody and in the Rumbling Arc that he has you know better leadership skills. And but Armin's portrayed as the better man, not just because he's a good person, but he's portrayed as just a better, uh, you know. He embodies the themes of the story better, and he and he pushes the plot forward in a way that Flock can't. And he and Flock is obviously you know more ignorant of himself and of other things than Armin is. To set up, what I believe what Aaron's about to say, because because the author's saying this up, he's saying Flock was saying how Aaron was better, right? How he became a devil, and how he was able to bring this far. Hanji's saying, yeah, Armin's good, but you know, without Aaron's experience and leadership, she brought up two things because Armin and Aaron can go head to head intelligence. She brought up two things specifically that Aaron has in beat and experience and leadership, right? So the author setting this up to where. Erwin is better on paper on is better than Armin. And he is on paper better than Armin. But watch what's about to be said by Aaron. People are relevant. <laughs> NPC side characters. Rest in peace, Mulvet. So he says in the manga that Sephirian gave up on a long time ago. Now, this is a very important line in regards to Jaegerberg because this right here proves that Aaron's intentions got corrupted over time. Right? And we saw this in an interview with Yams where he said, um, Aaron wants to see the sea because he knows it's there, he knows it exists, and so he has the right to see it. Something along those lines, and so instead of view, instead of going to the sea, the simple joy of it, he forgot that dream, right? He forgot the dream, but he still wants to reach the ocean. So what did he want to reach the ocean for, right? See, and that's where the whole that's where one thirty one comes in, where he wanted a world where no people were there, that wasn't explored yet. Is what Yusiyama said. And so um, this is why Armin and Aaron have this split and why he is happy. Even though Armin's not naive, everyone knows of the impending danger when they reach the ocean. The only reason why Aaron isn't happy is because he gave up on that dream. To dream and the dream is simple as this, to experience a simple joy. <laughs> 
受け入れられないよ正気を保つことさえままならないつらいつらいよ分かってるそれでも前に進まなきゃいけない兵長海って知ってますかいくら見渡しても終戦の果てまで続く巨大な湖だってアルミンがおいもうやめろよこの壁の向こうにある海をいつか見に行こうってでもそんなガキの頃の夢は俺はとっくにはとっくに忘れてた。Oh, I don't know what translation this is, but. So he says in the manga, so Jiren gave up on a long time ago. Now, this is a very important line in regards to Jaegerberg, because this right here proves that Eren's intentions got corrupted over time. Right? We saw this in an interview with Yams where he said,、um, Eren wants to see the sea because he knows it's there, he knows it exists, and so he has the right to see it. Something so along those lines. And so instead of, view, instead of going to the sea for the simple joy of it, he forgot that dream, right? He forgot the dream, but he still wants to reach the ocean. So, what did he want to reach the ocean for, right? See, and that's where the whole, that's where 131 comes in, where he wanted a world where no people were there. That wasn't explored yet, is what Yusiana said. And so,、um, this is why. Armin and Aaron have this split. And why he is happy, even though Armin's not naive, everyone knows the impending danger when they reach the ocean. The only reason why Aaron isn't happy is because he gave up on that dream. The dream and the dream is simple as this to experience the simple joy of、uh, seeing the ocean, to experience something new. And this is why, you know, his drive to, you know, see all this stuff, feel this nature. Is brought up in 131 when he's doing the rumbling. Way after he's already seen that, but the dream is actualized in 131 and he starts quoting how whoever sees those things with the free choice in the world. Because seeing the sights itself wasn't the goal. The sights, seeing the sights is what it represented. And what seeing those sights represented was a world devoid of humans. Which is why he's saying it when he's killing people. And he's, he, now, now he's. Right, what he said in chapter, what was it? It wasn't 67. Chapter in tune three, where he said、um, he knew he could never forgive them. Right, after he learned the time he took away their freedom, he knew he could never forgive them. And from that point on, he became more and more corrupted to where. His thoughts of experiencing simple joy grew to hatred, right? Which is why, you know, the sto- one of the things of the stories is hope or despair. Hope or despair. It even goes down to the last page. You know, is the last page hopeful or is it disparaging? And he chose despair and he continued down the path of despair until, you know, you know what happens. <laughs> right. Well, Armin is not. Armin is not. Armin is not. See, Orman has dreams. See, Aaron, see, see, this is, this is the thing we use AOTI uh, uh, vocabulary here. Aaron has goals, you could say. You know, kill all Titans, avenge his mom, yada, yada, yada. Which is, which is, you know, fine. But Orman has dreams, which is something that is, you know, Good in the AOT universe because it's something that is pure and it's something that's hopeful. So it gives him a good reason to fight. It gives him an infinite motor in a sense. He has dreams. He does not have、uh, these corrupted goals that Aaron has. When I was reading this,、um, I was firmly on the side of Aaron. I was like, oh, Erwin definitely. And pissed, you're supposed to be, right? And that's what I was saying, like, the author's setting it up. You're supposed to be on the side of Erwin, right? But then Aaron said that, I was like, you know, and that instantly changed my mind.、I'm、like, you know what? He's absolutely right. 
Armin has the drive, the motor, right? And we're going to see this later on. I'm, I, there's a lot of stuff to say. And he gets... We're going to get into the meat soon. So, Iko, Mikasa. あ、だ。だから。まずは海を見に行こうよ。見てろよ。絶対あるんだから。お前の夢ってのが叶ったら、その後はどうする。わからない。叶えてみないことにはな。俺は so notice what happened there. You know, I was talking to Browns about the scarf she brought up. She said, oh, visual storytelling tells that Mika's never let go of Aaron. I disagree. But she's right. Visual storytelling is important. Look at the visual storytelling that's going on here. We have Levi overseeing, overhearing a conversation that's going on. With um, Armin and, and, and uh, Mikasa and Aaron about what happens after they do all this, right? What happens, what happens after the goal is accomplished? He's excited. He's enthusiastic. He's full of life and dreams and hope. Armin is Ju juxtaposed to that is Erwin, who's somber, stoic. He says, "I don't know," right? I only know when it happens. Very uncertain. Very, you know, unclear. And a lot of people like to bring up, oh, he says eliminating threats later on, right? Which I'll do with that another time. But the scene that's specifically brought up, of all the scenes to bring up, in this particular instance, the author chooses the most appropriate scene is when he says, I don't know. I don't know. He has no, he has no plans. He has no plans, which means he'll have no drive. He has no reason to do anything, and we'll see this, you know, later on. He has no reason to do anything because his goal, right, is exactly, I want to reach the basement. Armin's goal is, is singular to point. I want to reach the basement. Armin's goal is ex having new experiences, which is why, you know, I, in 137, he, he brings up a book, reading a book on a rainy day, a squirrel, feeding a squirrel, yada, 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 because his goal is infinite. His goal is having new experiences, which he could do forever. Reaching the ocean was one of those many experiences. After reaching the ocean, he'll do, he'll do another thing. He'll have another dream. He'll learn about mountains. He'll, he'll, he'll want to climb Mount Everest. Erwin had one goal, and after that goal was done, it's done. It's the basement, and that's it. And that's why those scenes are being brought up. Look, let's look at it again. Look at the, look at the feelings. Juxtapose, and I know I know Erwin's a stoic guy, but look what the author is trying to do here. Another thing is that I don't know if you remember the scene or not, but they were all quiet and, and you know talking to each other quietly. It wasn't like an exciting thing. Orman, you know, conspicuously got up and jumped up. It was kind of awkward when you first watched the scene. He just you jumped up and got up and started and started you know going on and on. <laughs> ガキみたいに湧き散らしやがってみんな何かに酔っ払ってねえとやってられなかったんだらみんな何かの奴隷だったそれだけじゃないよ海だ And you see Kenny specifically brought up in this moment Right? Everyone has to be drunk at something. Right? Now, I'm of the opinion, I'm of the belief, and you could, I, I would love to have a discussion about this. I would really believe that Armin is the exception to this. He's a foil to this concept. He's not a slave to anything, which makes him the freest character. Um, I, I mean, it could be wrong. But everyone's drunk has to be drunk at something. And you see this, you know, even back before chapter 69 or 67, whatever, whatever chapter that was. Um, where he's talking about you have to have hobbies, right? Everyone has to have hobbies. It's, you know, it's hard to live the next day. You have to have hobbies to keep moving on. Erwin was drunk on seeing the basement. That was what his motor was. Everything that came from him, this came from, was seeing the basement. And that's why he was the greatest commander. Because he was so drunk, so passionate about proving his story right and seeing the basement. And he was willing to do 
anything and everything in order to achieve this goal. And, you know, we don't know what the other 12, but we know Keith wasn't that, you know, he didn't have that much inside of him. That's why he failed. So that's why everyone else failed. And, you know, he had the convenience of having Aaron and that too. But he was that way because he was singularly focused, completely drunk on reaching that basement. Ormin, however, is different. Ormin, his, so after he reaches the basement, his motor's gone. So the, so the, so the, the, the dreams, it's the gas. His goal is the gas for the car. Once the dream is accomplished, there's no more gas. He, he can't. He cannot do anything. And, with, and the events that are about to transpire require a large and industrious motor. Now, Levi doesn't know this, but we can infer that he, that you would need one, even if you don't know what's going to happen next. Orman has an infinite amount of gas to pour into the car. After he sees the ocean, as I said next, he will do something else. Do something else. Do something else. That's the nature of Armin's character allows him to be free in any circumstance and also allows them to have a high motor in any circumstance. There's nothing pushing Erwin forward after. There's nothing. His goal has already been accomplished. And on top of that, he's singularly focused. His main concern for years, decades of his life was himself. So it's not like he could all of a sudden pull out of nowhere, you know, patriotism or, you know, love for the world, if we're going to say he's, he's anti-rumbling, to use that as a motor to, to, to do whatever he needs to do. Only Armin has that, right? So uh, my personal belief, this is my personal interpretation, if you don't agree with me, I think this is purposeful. He smacked it away on purpose. He knew Armin was the best choice. That's my interpretation. Other people say she's having a dream, and he was raising his hand in the dream and in class. So he did it. Maybe it's both. I don't know. I just want to put that in there just in case you're like, oh, actually, yeah, I kind of see that. So. ありがとう。Now again, notice, he smiles and says, thank you. Did it ever occur to you guys why he, after he said, give up on your dreams and die, why he says, thank you. Because, this is why I say Armin Canaraxis, he was a slave to his dream, his goal. That dream imprisoned him and made him evil. And his true nature couldn't come out. Now, someone left a brilliant comment on one of my videos about how Erwin is, has two, two, two sides to him, or two, or two people. One's this guy, one's the, one's the leader, right? That leader was, that, that, that good, virtuous leader was trapped and couldn't be let forth because he was too selfish to let it out. He didn't allow himself to do anything else because he was trapped by this dream. After Levi puts the idea of him uh, being the leader, of, of him reaching the basement out, now he's free to do what he actually wants to do. How, how else could I explain this? Yeah, I don't know. But that's what's going on here. That's why he thanks him, right? And it's the same thing, same thing with Aaron, which is why Aaron died as well. Because his, you know, his goal of doing the rumbling is imprisoning him and making him do things he doesn't want to do. Which is why he sends his friends to kill him because he doesn't have the, 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 the strength of will to stop himself. Right? It's all connects, guys. It's all, it's all comes together. Go back to Kenny. Kenny's being brought over and over and over and over again in this. Right? And remembering this, remembering 
remembering all of this, this is what makes, this is what makes, um, Levi choose Erwin. Was remembering what he said about um, Dreams Kenny and remembering what he said to um, Erwin. Give him your doom to die. Th all that is what made him change his mind. And did anyone ever, you know, ask why why this specific thing? Did why this specific thing change his mind? I'm here to tell you that is why. Armin is the commander of the Survey Corps. Armin is the best commander, the best guy for the job, because he has the motor to do it. That's why. He is drunk on something that has an infinite supply. Dreams, experiences. That's what he's doing. That's why he's the best. And he's the freest. So I, he ends up surviving. He, you could say he lived life the right way, and he would, and karma rewarded him. As, as I said, I made a post about that, right? So I hope that brought some clarity to the situation. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.